Okay, all right, let me just look at this video. Now, when I say unkilled, I mean how long it took top guilds to down certain bosses from when they were first available. Like... So that's... I love how at the beginning here, it starts immediately with him saying top 10 unkilled raid bosses, and then him clarifying the obvious clickbait that he used to get people to go to the video at the beginning. Right? Just, just right off, right at the beginning, get that out of the way, it's done. Say, for example, how long did it take top guilds to down Mythic Archimond after beating Mythic Manoroth? And not how long it took them to down Mythic Archimond since the first day of the opening of Hellfire Citadel. Instead, it's from when the first time they were actually able to start doing the fight. Now that that distinction is made, let's get started on the list. Number 10 is, is Heroic right? Alec here, which took 36 days to down after the first oh, kill so of Heroic dumb. Conclave of Wind. Heroic Alec here was way over tune when it was first attempted. You can only have like 20 people on the, the platform or like 15 people. In the this kill video for the first hilarious. Paragon kill in 25 man, you there can actually is. see them just straight up leave about 8 players out of the fight during phase 1. Yeah. Because it was actually easier to have less players in the fight for that phase. That goes to say something about how messed up the fight was if having less players made the fight easier. Number 9 is Heroic Lich King, 25 man. Nope. He wasn't downed until 42 days after Heroic Putricide's death. Really? Well, the that's Lich King suffered from Alakir problems of being overtuned and just generally uh... a very difficult raid encounter. But that's understandable, seeing as he's one of Warcraft's most popular of villains. Of course he would, they, Giving him anything they, less than a crazy hard raid fight out. would piss off a lot of fans. You weren't able to do The first kill him. wasn't achieved until the ICC stack started rolling out, giving players an extra 5% damage and healing every couple of, of weeks course until not, it hit 30%. Yeah. It was even thought to be an impossible fight without the ICC buff, the fuck? but one of the top guilds later turned off their buff and went in for a kill to prove it could be done. Way later on in the expansion, well, yeah, they had, they had a like lot best of gear from the Lich King himself, yeah. Number 8. Alar, the Phoenix God, killed what? 48 days after Mag Theradon's death. Despite being the Wait, first why? boss of Tempest Keep, he was the second hardest boss of the raid. Oh, Alar yeah. had a very hard to deal that. with meteor mechanic ago. that was supposed to split damage with everyone in it. Okay. So the idea was to have a group of people soak it so it wouldn't wipe the raid. Only, it was overtuned and did a ton of damage, okay. and made the fight near impossible. So Guild right. had to think yeah. of creative ways to deal with the meteors, like having everyone in the raid level a warlock to level 18 to learn soulstone, and have half the raid get out of the raid soulstones just to go out and die to the meteor and reds. This was technically cheating, but Blizzard never really did anything about it. Yeah. Other than nerfing Soulstone every chance it got to try and prevent this tactic. Another way they of splitting the damage Soulstone was to use Snake everybody Trap in to the raid, the and then everybody goes inside and does the snakes. boss. Shit was hilarious. Harder to do, but technically not cheating like the Soulstone method. Oh, and Alar would also randomly charge Clothies and one-shot them. That also contributed to his long time of being unkilled. Number seven, the Four Horsemen in Vanilla Nats. What? They lasted 56 days after Gothic's death. What the fuck? The original really? Four Horsemen are one of the hardest fights ever. Put Weren't in they the game. like bugs? Mainly or? because it had a very unique mechanic. You see, in order to do the Four Horsemen, to figure that shit you needed out? eight tanks. And not only did you need eight tanks, wow. you needed eight warrior tanks with a specific four set bonus that made it so your taunt couldn't miss. I because in those okay. days, taunt could miss, and one miss taunt meant a wipe on four horsemen. Yep. So, the reason this fight took so long to down was basically just having to gear up eight warrior tanks with eight four set bonuses to do literally one boss. Want to know how many other bosses besides four horsemen used eight tanks? Zero. Zero. Oh, Number right. six, how about that? High Astromancer Solarian. Killed 59 days after How many tanks you need for four horsemen? Another Tempest Keep boss. Oh, eight. This boss went yeah. through three nerfs because it was considered too hard to kill. That, combined with most oh, guilds working on Alar in the same her. instance instead of High Astromancer, leads to her long unkilled time. I remember these bosses her first being iteration so hard. had her be a high like held boss guild, so with a front arc arcane missile attack that ignored arcane resistance. Its second form, after Blizzard decided that was crazy hard to beat, was a nerf to her health and arcane missiles that hit the entire raid instead of an arc cone, yeah. which still ignored arcane resistance. Top guilds were finally able to get a kill at this version, 
but it was considered still too hard. It was later nerfed two more times to be what it is today. It's crazy. Number five, I any of these. Yogg okay, this Alone one, yeah, in the I darkness. remember this. Killed 70 days after Yogg won light in the darkness. This version of the Yogg fight with no keepers was long thought to be mathematically impossible to do. Wow, that's Until the Chinese Guild familiar. Stars was able to do the fight with some really smart kiting patterns to the ads that spawned yep. the last phase. Plus, Warlocks being able to channel the boss without having to actually face that's it. That's right, dude. There was one other kill before stars got their legit kill, where the raid just exploited the encounter by evading the ads in the last phase by getting healing aggro on them from inside Yogg's brain room, but that one didn't count for obvious reasons. Number Good four, job, Ragnaros. Killed 74 days after Major Domo's death. Why did it Ragnaros take... was one of the first final bosses Why did these ever, take so long? And everyone was still pretty new Nobody to knew raiding, what the fuck so they were his doing. long kill time shouldn't not. be all that surprising, really. It was simply a much tougher and long as hell fight compared to wow. everything else in Molten Core. Number three, Cro-Magus. Tied with Ragnaros at 74 days after Ebonrock's death. What the fuck? Cro-Magus was one of the more technically challenging fights in vanilla. When not many fights besides maybe final bosses That's so weird. were. It was also in the same yeah, raid where two of the hardest boss fights ever were the first and second boss of the instance causing many guilds to break up before even getting to Cro-Magus. That's true. As for the fight itself, well, it was just a very complicated fight. We have many like it today, but it was a new thing for vanilla raiders, so it took them some time to get used to the mechanics. Once they did, it was though, actually hard. it became a lot to easier to do on attempts afterwards. That's why he, There wasn't was so really hard to beat. any bugs or overtuning mistakes that half the other bosses on this list have. Cro-Magus was just uh, a technically challenging fight. It was the first one we'd Number ever had. Number two, Cthulhu, killed 86 days after the Twin Emperor's first death. Well, then who's Cthune number one? is considered by most WoW players as the hardest boss fight ever made. What the fuck? I don't personally agree with that. Cthulhu was just horribly overtuned and bugged. The first kill didn't happen until after Blizzard nerfed the fight, because it was technically impossible to do, even with KJ, all the best think? gear in the game we'll and see. if every player did their job perfectly. So why is Cthulhu only the second longest unkilled boss? If he was unkillable, okay. well, because there was another boss in the same instance that was also pretty much unkillable and way less sought after. The number one unkilled boss is Oro, who was killed 87 days after the Twin Emperor's defeat. What? And one day after Cthulhu. You what? see, the thing with Oro was that he was overtuned and bugged. No. Plus an optional boss. I had no idea. So no one really bothered with it and worked on Cthulhu. What instead. the fuck? His biggest You're bug a was his sandblast booby, ability, I guess which I had everyone in front of him for enough damage to take about 90% of a geared caster's health, and also stunned wow. everyone for a couple of seconds. He would then turn to his next highest aggro target and do it again. Jesus the Christ. idea behind this mechanic was to create a small safe zone for the raid while only two tanks got hit. What instead happened was he would cast sandblast four times before the first stun wore off. Every boss Not was two. bugged. Meaning there were this no safe great. zones. Everyone got hit well, and stunned if they didn't die from the ability damage itself. <laughs> to top it off, his quake ability was overtuned and did more damage than it should have. He stayed underground longer than he was above ground. His adds that spawned during this phase were also overtuned, and sometimes That's he just so wouldn't weird. come back up after going underground, spawning adds endlessly. All I in all, pretty nasty fight. There's a reason people avoided it before Blizzard finally fixed it. No, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about this list, man. I think Heroic Alakir should have been higher. I think that OR probably, like, I think there's so many bugs that, like, they're talking about that it makes it, well, like, I mean, Four Horsemen, yeah, I totally agree. Astromancer, like, I, mean, I guess, like, I don't know, like, I guess some of these are actually really fucking hard. I never really thought about the perspective, like, man, did people just really suck dick back in vanilla? What are you talking about? You played vanilla all of like 30 days, man. You have no place anywhere to talk about anything vanilla. You spent like 30 days in vanilla. That's it. Let other people talk about vanilla. You don't know. You are clueless. It's going to be You're hilarious clueless. whenever I go into those raids with my group of people that don't know anything and we clear them all in one day because they're easy and they're made for brain-dead idiots with bad internet connections and shitty computers. 
They're joke what raids that? with joke what mechanics that, any... that do that joke damage, do. and the only difficulty was getting 40 clowns to do the same thing at the same See, time. He does this. He does this. He he acts like, oh yeah, when I go clear some, it's gonna be done. Man. It's gonna be a joke. Hey, we're gonna go. In. Yeah, but you are not. You're not taking into account the fact that most people back then were either on dial-up well, that's what or I'm saying. dsl so this is what i mean it's right like, so what, yeah. what the so fuck people, do you know about it well that that, well, that was literally there? what i was saying that's literally you were what doing i was saying bwl aq all that shit yeah, neither you were, were you like what do you mean yes i was yeah, what do right. you mean yeah right like how far did you get in vanilla i cleared bwl Wait, really? that's it yeah no uh -huh. really yes yeah that's all i did damn Hey, but that's still more than you, idiot. No, you're right. It is. It's a lot more. But like, still, the you know the bosses were a joke, man. Like, I I can guarantee you. Like, whenever vanilla comes out, it's gonna be easy. Like, method isn't even trying because they know how easy it's gonna be. Okay, that's how easy it is. I'm sorry. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of vanilla fanboys. It's a it's a joke. Okay, it's just a fucking it, joke. Yeah, it's a joke now. It wasn't a joke back then. Well, exactly, dude. and that's what I was saying. I was saying, did people just suck back then? And you said no, and I said yes. You know what? What? EverQuest has been out for like 20 years. I bet if you tried EverQuest today, you would quit after a few hours because you're so clueless. You're right. So I'd never try it at all because it's a shit game. It's you a shit so game. It looks so like ignorant. everything in the game so looks ignorant, like it was dude. written on a piece of fucking cardboard and then photocopied into the fucking game. It looks You're like garbage. Idiot. It is the worst game I've it ever seen. It was made 20 years ago. Of course it looks like garbage. It plays it was, like it was... garbage too. I've seen people no, play you... it. Yeah, have you ever played it though? Have you ever personally no, played it? Because no. Of, no, that's right. No. I haven't eaten dog shit either, but I've seen what it looks like. I've the seen how it reason... smells, and I'm like, I don't want to do shut this. Shut the fuck up. You don't. You have no respect for Trailblazers, dude. The only reason we have WoW nowadays is because of things like AQ, well, man. I, I really and appreciate. And shit no, like that. I, I do. I appreciate. Oh, the... it sounds like you. Sh oh, yeah. You, it sounds like you really appreciate that shit. Well, I'm not. It's Holy not. It's there's fuck, two man. different things. You like are so this is such a ungrateful. high road, Andy, man. It's you're not a high road. You're I'm high saying, roading me so fucking hard. I'm saying hard you gotta right respect. Now. This is no, I'm not. I'm saying you. That's what, what, bullshit. I'm saying you gotta respect it. Can I get a fucking word in? Go. I'm saying you got to respect the origins of gaming. Sometimes you just have to understand where everything comes from and respect it. And right now you're not respecting it. You're just talking and, and saying, oh, this shit, it was shit. It plays like shit. Nobody gives a fuck, blah, blah, blah. You're being such a fucking baby rager, dude. Okay, so here's the thing, right? Is that, all right, imagine you go back in time and you drive a Model T Ford, all right? It fucking sucks. The seats are bad. There's no radio. It's really hot. There's no air conditioning. There's no GPS. There's no power steering. There's no ABS. There's no uh, fucking automatic windows. It's not a convertible. It's a piece of shit, okay? I can go back and I say that car is a piece of shit, while at the same time acknowledging that if we didn't have that car, we wouldn't have a Mustang now. Yeah, I know. That's exactly what I'm saying. Good. All right, then we agree. Perfect. Good. 